Hi. Today I want to talk about something that we don't really get a chance to spend too much time talking about, and that is mixing. You know, in our classrooms, we spend a lot of time talking about songwriting and um, you know production, how to put a song together, and I even go over about recording and how we want to set microphones up and whatnot. But mixing is one of those things where we don't get a chance to really dive into because we're spending so much time on the other parts to it. With songwriting, I mean, we're usually talking about the overall message and the story. Um, basically, essentially, like what's the melody going to be, the chord progression, and the type of emotion that we want to convey. With recording, obviously, we were talking about you know recording live instruments such as guitars or pianos or drums. We want to make sure we're getting a good performance with those recordings, and we set our levels right. In uh, the production part, we were talking about the main portion of it, the arrangement, the instruments that we're going to use, any kind of effects and ear candy we're going to add to it. And then we were kind of just left with those three that we end up talking about, and that's it. If we were to break down a complete song into parts, I'd probably say that you know 30% is in the songwriting portion, where we want to really spend all of our time in the pre-planning. In the recording part to it, we obviously want to make sure that we get a good performance. You know, it's the same old saying of, if you uh, record something really bad, you can't get it to sound good. You can't polish something bad into good. You can't do it. The production part is where we want to spend almost all of our time there because that's about 35% of the song. That's where we really want to think about the overall arrangement. What instruments are we using? Are we going to be using live instruments or MIDI instruments? Or are we going to be blending the two? Do we want to have this section different than another section? Talk about transitions. The production part to it is the most important part. But again, we tend to then just say, all right, well, we're done, that's it, and we call it quits. We just talk about these essentially 85% of the song, 30, 20, 35, add them together, that's 85%. Um, you know, being a school teacher, I know that an 85% is a B. It's not a good grade. That's just, that's an okay grade. It's not even a B plus. It's just okay, it's a B, it's average. So how do we get our song to go from a B to an A? How do we get that last 15% so our song sounds amazing? What do we need to add to it? Well, we need to add mixing to it. If we mix the song well, that's gonna bring our song from a B to an A. Now, what do we wanna include in our mixing? Well, that's where we're gonna add all the effects like compression, EQ, and any kind of reverbs or delays, but those are kind of advanced techniques, and depending on the grade level and how much time you have with your students, you may not wanna spend that time. You may wanna just only focus on the uh, essential items. And for me, I find the three essential items are organization, panning, and volume. So let's dive into our DAW and see how just these three simple uh, techniques can really affect the overall sound to make your song go from a B to an A. Let's check it out. What I love most about this lesson is that it's a great one-off kind of lesson. If you're looking for a project that you just want to spend one day on and not three, four, five classes on, this is a great uh, project to do because the process of it is pretty simple and pretty straightforward. Plus, you can kind of create an um, there's like a checklist of things for your, your students to do, and as long as they complete those three things, you're pretty, they're pretty much set. So first, let's go ahead and just listen to the mix first to hear what it sounds like. All right, you get the idea. Um, all I simply did was I just found sounds that I liked and made an arrangement. I haven't done anything else with it. I literally just put the sounds in the order I want and how I want the song to sound. So that's why um, it's you know probably about an 85% done. It's a good song, it sounds good, but it's not great yet, it's not an A. So the first thing that I always want my students to do is to organize the tracks. We organize them by putting all of the instruments that are similar together, and then we also give them the same color. So for example, kick drum 
and piano are not in the same instrument family. Kick drum is a percussion, piano is, well, technically percussion, but I'm gonna treat it more as a keyboard. So let's go ahead and rearrange our track list so all of all the drum instruments are together, the basses are all together, the guitars are all together, and we have all of the similar instruments in, uh, kind of grouped together. Now that they're grouped together, let's color code them the same, so that way I know that um, which color is gonna uh, go towards what instrument. So now I can easily see which instruments are what. So now if I'm getting ready to mix and I say, oh, you know what, oh, that snare drum's way too loud, well, I know to instantly go to a red track, and then I can easily uh, find the track that I want to adjust. Now that we're nice and organized, we're not going to talk about the next spot to it, and that is panning. So when we're mixing a song, we want to have a spot for every single instrument. We don't want them to kind of all be up the middle because that creates too much overlapping and doesn't create enough space for every instrument. We want to have every instrument have its own spot in our song, and we don't want them to compete or fight against uh, for the listener to hear. Now, panning is more of a preference. You really can place uh, these sounds wherever you like. I know in a lot of the Beatles songs, they would have their drums panned to the left. Um, for me, I like to keep my drums and bass up the middle. If I'm thinking some kind of um, scale or a weighing system, I like to, I want to keep a good balance of drums and bass. They're, they tend to be some very low ends, and having them in the middle creates uh, what I feel an overall um, cohesive song. So I'm going to keep pretty much all of my drum sounds in the middle, except because my shaker and hi-hat are kind of similar sounds, if I go ahead and play just the shaker real quick, and there's my and here's my hi-hat. Again, they kind of sound alike, so I want to very distinctly be able to recognize the difference in, uh, in their sounds. So I'm going to just pan one hard left and one hard right. So now, when I play it, you will see that uh, the hi-hat and shaker have a uh, defined spot. They're no longer competing for that space. All right, like I said, uh, the bass, I like to keep up the middle as well. Bass is such a very heavy, low-end sound that if you pan it to one side, you're going to feel very out of balance. You're going to feel very leaning towards one side. All right, so this is a little more complicated, but you could probably notice that this piano part here is sort of the very lead instrument. So I'm going to leave that in the middle. I want that up the middle since that's the lead sound. I want that very prominent um, in both ears. Um, if I had more tracks available, I probably would uh, double this track and then pan one left and right so it creates this very big stereo sound, but I only have 16 tracks to work with, so that's what we're dealing with. And the next instrument here kind of gave it away. This is also a lead sound. This is sort of like the uh, B uh, melody line. So we kind of have two lead sounds. This is the A section, this is the B section. And then over here we have both of them playing at the same time. So the best way that I'm gonna describe doing this is I'm gonna automate the uh, panning for these two tracks. I want this, this first part to be in the middle since it's kind of all by itself. There's really no other competing sound with it. And then these two uh, loops right here for the B section are all by themselves. So again, I want them to be in the middle. That way, again, this is the front and center sound. Right here, when the two sounds are now playing at the same time, this is when I want to uh, make some changes to my panning. So we get to the part where they're both competing against each other. We're just gonna have one pan hard left and then one pan hard right. It doesn't really matter which way you choose. I just wanted them to be on opposite ends, so that way they're not competing for their uh, competing for the lead. Uh, over here, we have some more decisions to make. Uh, same thing. I'm going to go ahead and just pan this one hard. Uh, not, you know let's not do a hard left or right. Let's do maybe just like a 33. It's just so because this is sort of a counter melody. So I'm not going to do a hard pan. I'm going to just do sort of a uh, like a, a partial pan to this, so that way again they're not competing for the sounds. Again, one's right, one's left. And this ARP over here will just keep up the middle. 
So now I have a spot for all of my sounds. Every, every single uh, track has its own space to live in. So good, now nice and organized. I have pan panning. And now the last thing about mixing, probably the most important part, is our volume control, our volumes. Our last mixing tool is going to be volume. And, and volume is probably the most important, critical uh, part to mixing and everything. Forget your effects, whether compression, EQ, none of that is king to volume. Volume takes care of 95% of the problems. Everything else is just sugar and spice and sprinkles. The way that I like to mix a song is I like to turn everything down. Now when we're mixing a song, we're essentially trying to make sure that no instrument is overpowering any other, and only the sounds that we want to take the lead are louder than the rest. Basically, we want to make sure that we have a good balance. We don't want the, um, the shaker to just be in your face where we can't hear the lead melody. Or maybe we don't want the bass to be that, um, that loud where all of a sudden it, you're just unable to hear any of the effects. Volume is king. So I got my main uh, volume uh, fader right here. And I'm going to make sure that as I listen to it, I'm not going to be clipping. Digital clipping is the worst possible thing that you could do. Once you clip, once you're in red, your sound in that part is ruined and you can't fix it at all. So the entire time we're going to be mixing, I'm going to keep my eye right here and make sure that I don't go into red. So there, you can do what's called the foundation method, which is you start with the instruments that um, are like the base of the song, which is usually the drums and bass. You start with those two sounds first, get them to really fit nicely, and then you start just adding in the rest. That's the foundational method. You start with the drums and bass, building this huge foundation of a house, then you start building your walls, which would maybe be the piano and synths, then you build your roof, which is like the melody line, and all your additive effects, obviously. Let's go ahead and start mixing the song. I'm going to start with the bass drum, and get that to a volume that I think sounds good. Now I don't want to crank it all the way up because as you can see, my master fader is kind of in the yellow already. So if I go ahead and just add one other sound to it, you can tell I'm already clipping now with just two sounds and I have 14 other sounds to deal with. So that's not going to be a good way. I don't want to leave it at zero as well because I want to leave headroom. I want to leave room for all of my other instruments as well. So let's put this at like a four for now. My claps are bench essentially the snare. So I'm going to try my best to use my ears to get them to be the same volume. If I crank this one up, right, that clap sound is way louder than the bass. I want my bass and snare to sound at the same volume. And let's just keep adding more. Let's go ahead and check out the entire song now. Remember what it sounded like before, and here's the finished project. Thank you so much for watching this video. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Remember, we want to teach our students not just how to make a song, but also how to finish a song. How to get to that last 15% to mix it correctly so it sounds like a 100% A-plus kind of song. And we do that by simply organizing, panning, and volumes. Don't worry too much about your EQ, compression, effects. That's just extra sauce on top of it already. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next video.